Hi everybody, Ms. Duncan Taylor here and we're doing kitchen photosynthesis, but obviously I'm not out in the kitchen. I'm outside. I can't think of a better place to talk about photosynthesis than out here in the sunshine in my own backyard. Before we get started, you need to go to Google Classroom and you need to find this diagram. It's called Photosynthesis and Respiration, What Goes Around Comes Around. You need to print it off. And then you need to find yourself some colored pens or pencils or even crayons, I don't care, and bring them back, okay? So print that off, get your colored, your colored pens and pencils, and come right back. So pause the video, we'll see you in a minute. So what I wanna do here is I wanna talk to you about photosynthesis and respiration, the whole picture. And this is not just any, it's not respiration. I mean, it, it involves your inhaling and exhaling, but it's called cellular respiration because it goes down, it happens inside of every cell all over your body. It even happens in every cell inside of a leaf. Cellular respiration goes on virtually everywhere. But photosynthesis, you know, only goes on in leaves. It involves, these two reactions involve these two organelles. The first one you know of as a chloroplast. Inside of leaves and of plants. And the other one is the mitochondria. which is inside of all cells of plants and animals. So chloroplast is only in the plants, mitochondria is everywhere, okay? So here's some basics. You know that a chloroplast is in the cells of leaves and they take in CO2 from the air. Right. You also know that water comes up from the roots. It goes into the chloroplast. There, it's energized by the sun. And inside the chloroplast, enzymes, with the help of the energy from the sun, dismantle the carbon dioxide and the water into carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The enzymes knit those carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens back together in a new arrangement. And it produces sugar, monosaccharide to be exact, and oxygen. Oxygen, it turns out, is a surplus. Now you're looking at this and you're realizing, hey, six carbons go, one carbon goes in, but six carbons come out. Two hydrogens go in and 12 hydrogens come out. And here we got three oxygens in, and here we've got eight oxygens out. What's up with that? Conservation of matter. In reality, this happens to balance the reaction happens like this, all right? If six carbons came out, then that means six carbons had to go in. If 12 hydrogens come out, it means 12 hydrogens had to go in, all right? But now this does something weird to our oxygens. Here we've got 12 oxygens and six oxygens, but here we only have eight. So how do you balance it? If you put a six right here, you get six oxygen molecules. There's 12 and there's your 18. So here you got your 18 in and now you got your 18 out. Six, six, six. <laughs> Devil of an equation, don't you think? All right, so this is the essence of photosynthesis. All right, happens in the sunlight, leaf cells, chloroplasts. This next part, is respiration. 
cellular respiration. And remember, it goes on in plants and animals. So now what happens is, for us people, we eat the sugar, we inhale the oxygen, and with the help of enzymes, we dismantle, we tear apart those sugar and oxygens and we rearrange them into something new. The new thing that we make is a molecule called ATP. That's adenosine triphosphate. All right. Now those adenosine triphosphate molecules, something really simple, remember these that we worked with with DNA? And adenine, there it is, adenine. It uses a modified DNA molecule to do this, a modified what's called a nucleic acid. And it sticks on another phosphate, adenosine dinucleotide, and then here's the third tri one, two, three, tri, tri, tri phosphate. There it is. Now these pieces are already here in the mitochondria waiting for this chemical reaction to happen. And what it does is it takes this sugar and it tears the sugar apart and it uses the energy from the sugar to stick those phosphates on. Think of these guys like batteries in your cell phone. And when you plug in your cell phone, into the outlet, it use it recharges those ATPs. Well, when you eat sugar, you are basically recharging your ADPs into ATPs. Now, this is what you really run on. So you guys all learned that you run on sugar. Yeah, you really run on this ATP because what happens is that we take these phosphates and we kick them off one at a time. Oh, I smudged that. It's supposed to say seven kilocalories. It gives off, when you break off one of these phosphates, it gives off seven kilocalories of energy. Not much, but it's, imagine a whole bunch of dominoes lined up and it only takes one little kick, spoink, and that gets the whole reaction going. Well, when you kick off one of those phosphates, that's that little spoink and it makes a chemical reaction happen. You think a thought, you say a word, you write something with your pen, you move a muscle. All of those chemical reactions are because of spoink. And then what you do is later on you recycle it and you put it back on. That's why we have to eat. We eat so that we can recharge our ATP. So let's finish up this reaction. So once you've made the ATP, oh and hey I forgot to tell you, something else that happens here you have one sugar molecule, but putting out is about 38 ATPs. Imagine that, putting a dollar bill into, the, into a machine and getting $38 out. It's awesome. Okay, so then the next thing is that here we've now we've made the ATP. What do you do with these pieces left over? You got it. The hydrogen and oxygen recombine and you exhale water. The carbon and the oxygen recombine and you exhale carbon dioxide. You see, what goes around comes around.